Hello everyone. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and today I am here to bring you this super cute, super fun uh, wiper card. Um, you may also know of it as a peekaboo card. I saw different terminology uh, for the card when I was doing a little research on it. Um, but wiper card seems to be like the official tutorial name for this type. I didn't want to call it a pop-up card because that's a little bit different of a technique when you open up the card and then something pops up from the inside. And of course you could do it um, different ways, but this um, I did decide to stick with wiper. Um, so the card that you're looking at here um, let me just make a note about the audio. I am re-recording audio as we speak. I am doing a voiceover recording. Um, some of you were kind enough to tell me that there were major problems with the audio and you couldn't hear me. And since this is a technical tutorial, I wanted to redo it. Um, that's unusual, but here we are. So um, hang in there with me. Here is a different angle just showing you the mechanism from the wiper card. And the card that I am um, showing you, the completed one, there's a lot of pieces to this particular card. So I decided to do a little bit of a simpler version on camera. So we're going to do a second um, design. So you'll have two Halloween design options for your cards. Okay, so this first card here that you're seeing features the cute Halloween suite. Um, designer series paper, inks. Um, I did not use the punch for this particular card. Um, the host code that I'm referring to uh, by the time you see this video will be expired. But if you are interested in my current host code for September, uh, you can go to my Facebook page and you will see um, the code there starting September 1st. Um, this is a replay, but I had to fix it, so we are a few days late now. Um, this video has actually been posted since Monday, but since the audio was so bad, I decided to redo it. So that's why you're seeing um, old information there. Anyway, we can go ahead and move on from that. I always forget to mention it, which is why I was spending so much time on it. Um, we learn as we go, right? Okay, so um, now we're going to start getting into the pieces for the wiper card we're going to make together. And I wanted to make mention of demonstrator. She's also a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, Julie Davison. She has a great tutorial on wiper cards um, that I highly recommend if you want to see um, right down to the post-its. I actually took, um, took notes right from Julie, uh, so I wanted to give her a shout out. This is our card base size, which is going to be four and a quarter by eight and a half. You're going to score it at one and a half and three inches. The next panel is going to be two by eight and a half and also scored at one and a half and three inches. But this little Z fold is going to sit at the opposite end, which we'll see here in just a moment. That's going to be key for our little mechanism there. We'll get to that soon. This is basic black cardstock, by the way. All right, so let's start getting into our um, designer series paper. This is the cute Halloween 6x6 designer series paper pack that I'm working with here. This is the haunted house pattern, and I really like this because of the moon. And I wanted to do a uh, witch theme with it. I'm showing you and referring to the skeleton pattern, which is a different sheet from the same designer series paper set. And that striped paper is actually the other side of the skeleton uh, paper. So really, really fabulous patterns to work with there, both, you know, the cute Halloween, and then there are some more neutral tones and patterns. Um, so you could use cute Halloween for other things if you like um, vertical lines and things like that. Uh, a lot of black and white theme with that particular uh, designer series paper set. Um, I was talking about the backgrounds being busy. Uh, the witch, which is going to end up being the um, pop-up piece for this particular wipe-up card, because it's on a nice bright piece of basic white cardstock, it's going to stand out really clear against that busy background. And when I say busy, I, I absolutely love the pattern. But if um, you you know, put something that can get lost in there. Like I felt like the ghosts in the other pop-up card are 
um, the ghost and the other wiper card, I should say, I felt like it got a little bit lost. Like you kind of had to look for them um, among the skeleton heads. So with the um, haunted house pattern, I really wanted to make sure that it really stood out clearly, especially for video, right? Okay, so for these two pieces here, you're gonna see where they, they sit. These are, I believe, one and one quarter inch by four. You're gonna need two of those. All right, and then these are one and a quarter by one and three quarter inches. You're gonna need two of those. And you can choose whatever paper patterns you like. Um, and just like I was saying, uh, see the black and white polka dot. And, you know, it's, it's adorable for Halloween, but it doesn't have to be Halloween. So you do have some versatility with this designer series paper pack. And this piece here, I made at the last minute, so I don't have a post-it for it. But it is one and three quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. I decided at the last minute to add another designer series paper panel. Um, the card that I was kind of using as my template had just like a, a cardstock piece for a sentiment there and like just the regular cardstock as the base, which is also really, really cute. Um, but I liked, I really loved the patterns and I love the way these two patterns look together. It's very um, visual. Okay, so that was the piece I was originally going to use, but decided not to. So you don't need to worry about that particular measurement. But if you need it, there it is. <laughs> okay, and then the next piece, let's see, I think it's the, oh yeah, it's our actual witch. So it's the actual piece that's going to pop up and hide behind that two inch panel there. So this is the layering circle die, which is one and three quarter inches. Um, you want to have whatever piece it is that's going to be popping up in your wiper technique, you want to make sure it's under two inches um, so that it can hide effectively behind that panel. There is a circle die that comes in the um, Frightful Tags dies or the Frightfully Cute Bundle. Um, it's just a little bit smaller um, and I wanted a, a slightly larger moon. So I decided to go with the layering circle, but the other one is fine too. Um, if you're okay with a slightly smaller size. Here, I'm just referencing that circle that I'm talking about. Um, I can't recommend this bundle enough. Frightfully cute bundle. So, so perfect for Halloween. Um, and same with cute Halloween. Slightly different feel and tone to these sets, but that's why we do one of each card because they are both incredible. They just both have kind of like a different feel and a different tone to them, but they still work together beautifully. And since this is celebration, if you spend 50 or more, um, you can actually earn free rewards through September 30th, 2021. Um, and I have links in the description if you are interested in that. Here is the window sheet, which is a half an inch by two inches. And that is what we're going to put that little wiper piece on um, that will be attached to the mechanism. Now, this little white rectangle is actually the mechanism. So it's just a piece of cardstock. Um, you fold over the one edge to create this triangle, um, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but i um, just going over the sizes. So it's one by one and seven eighths or one and 15 sixteenths, same exact concept here. You just want to be sure it's under two inches so that this little rectangle hides behind the panel. The key here is that you can't see anything in that panel until you do the technique. So here, if you take the, the end of that, that corner of cardstock and you fold it over and it meets that line on the other end of the cardstock, that becomes your, um, your mechanism. So really simple. Now I did some modifications that I wanted to show you with the original card. I actually created a piece on the back where you could do your greeting or your sentiment or write your note to whoever the intended recipient is. Um, and we're going to do the same thing on the card in the tutorial, just with a different theme. So what you're looking at there um, on the uh, Great Granite card is Highland Heather cardstock with basic black, I'm um, not basic black, Memento Tuxedo Black ink with the bat stamp. It's like a trio of bats from the Sparkle of the Season stamp set. Now, once we have all of our panels cut and ready to go, you can just start adhering them down. I happen to have um, Stamp and Seal Plus on my desk because I wanted to use a stronger adhesive 
with a fun fold card. Our fun fold cards get a little more um, action and movement than maybe a typical card. So I would recommend a stronger adhesive. You could do tear and tape adhesive too. Um, it's up to you. So now I'm showing you this is old olive card stock with the frightful tag, the fancier tag. And here I'm just kind of designing my layout with you guys. So I did this on a Facebook Live originally, um, and I was just trying to decide on my layout. I knew I wanted to do a witch theme, so and I knew I wanted to stick with that green color. I just thought that was so cool. And we have these awesome witches hats and these little stars from the Frightful Tags dies, and I thought we can tie this all together. This is gonna be perfect. So I cut some in basic black, I cut some in the um, old olive, and I actually backed them with the adhesive sheets, which basically turns your die cuts into stickers. So much easier, you guys, when you're working with smaller pieces, just makes it easier to deal with. Um, so I highly recommend that. Okay, so here I am just showing you how I'm lining up the edges of that panel because I'm about to adhere the one side down. And then we'll start getting into the work of um, adding our little mechanism piece. And I know when you're looking at the fun fold, it looks tricky and it is a little bit intimidating when you try a new one, right? But that's part of the fun of it. Um, it's actually really easy to do once you get the hang of it. And I think this is one of those that gets a little bit addictive and you just wanna make so many, you know, you just wanna make as many as you can. We're definitely gonna do another version for Christmas. I'm working on that now, um, but here you just see me just being really careful because you wanna make sure this lines up properly so that the wiper technique works, okay? So I'm just testing it out. And now I'm just trying to find the best angle to show you how you can adhere this. So you have, um, those two score lines right at one and a half and three inches. Now that very end piece that I'm touching is gonna to be glued down to the card base. So it's this middle piece here that I'm pointing at that you wanna focus on for your little um, fold technique. So you're gonna take a couple of glue dots. I like glue dots because while they do hold, you have a few minutes if you need to move it around um, before it really fully sets. If you use a stronger adhesive on this particular piece, it's gonna be really hard to pull it up. Now that said, no one's gonna see the back of the panel if you make a mistake. Um, this is the hidden part of the panel. But you wanna take that little folded triangle and that is what's gonna go up against the score line and that middle piece of the card base, just like that. Now you're gonna take your little window sheet. We're gonna put another glue dot on the bottom there. And again, um, I was taking notes from Julie Davison on this particular piece. Really love the glue dots for this. And then we're gonna just set that right down on this little fold, um, that little folded piece of cardstock there. It just looks deceptively simple, doesn't it? So once you get that down, and I'll just press that there, I'm just trying to find my positioning. We're going to take another glue dot, put it at the top of the window sheet. And that is what we are going to adhere our ghost in the, or not ghost, uh, our witch in the moon, the witch silhouette in the moon. Um, and we're going to set that down. And that's going to be like facing up, looking at us when we're working, like when we're putting this together. Um, and you can see how it's like going to start sitting within that panel there. Okay, so we're going to test it out. Okay, and you can see what I'm trying to show you here is that it hides behind that panel. That's why you want it to be under two inches. And now we're going to test it out and see if it works. And it does. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. Um, yeah, so you can just see how that just, there's so much potential there. So many different themes that you could do. Okay, and then again, just kind of talking about the way that little mechanism piece sits there. I mean, it just looks so easy, doesn't it? I mean, I would never, I don't know who comes up with this, but I'm grateful to them because it's such a cool card. Okay, and now what I'm doing is I just wanted to go over that and do that together with you. So um, this is a one inch strip of basic white cardstock. I'm showing you that I'm cutting it just under two inches. How close you want to get is up to you. Um, but the important piece is that it's it's smaller than the, the strip that we're working with that it's going to hide behind. 
I'm just going to fold this piece together down with you. So you just want to kind of like encourage your cardstock, just kind of work it down. And once that edge, that opposite edge meets the line there, that's when you go ahead and fold that piece. And that's where you're going to put your glue dots. And that's all there is to it. That was um, the first the first time I made the card. What tripped me up was the positioning on the panel. I put it on the longer panel instead of in that middle piece. So I think there's always that extra step that we're like, okay, you know, what did I do? But all I had to do is readjust it and then I, I had it down. So um, don't be afraid to practice with this. And then once you do get it, you'll remember it. And that's, that's the glory of YouTube, right? You can come back and watch these tutorials as you need to. So um, here, once we know that everything is looking the way that we want it to and it's sitting right, I'm going to go ahead and glue this panel down. Um, so just so that you understand how that's going to sit back behind the card. And then um, it's okay to get our stamp and seal plus. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to line it up edge to edge. And we're going to set that down. If you want to have a pop up that is um, bigger than two inches, inches, make sure the panel that it's going to hide behind is bigger than two inches. I always use more adhesive than I need to. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You, you let me know in the comments. Do you, are you really careful about your adhesive or do you use a ton of adhesive on your cards? I use so much. I, n I never want my cards to fall apart. I just want them to stay uh, together forever, uh, especially, you know, whether I'm keeping them myself or if I'm giving them to somebody, I want them to be good quality. And of course we have good quality adhesive, but it just makes me feel better. It's just a security thing. Okay, so this is the Frightfully Cute stamp set. I decided to go with the sentiment, which way to the candy. I think that it would be absolutely adorable to do a coordinating little like gift bag or gift tag or um, something that you could hold a couple of treats in. Um, or if you're shipping this, you know, a little box um, that would match your card and it would actually have the candy in it or the gift in it, just depending on um, what you choose to gift for Halloween. Older kids are tough, right? The young kids, psh, you give them a card that does something cute like this and they're sold. Um, give them a piece of candy and they're really over the moon. I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink um, with these cards, both cards actually. And then we're gonna pop that up on dimensionals there. I loved the way it looked in that. Um, in the center of the middle panel. I originally did this on a Facebook Live, so we were just designing on the fly. I'm, I'm so not used to doing voiceovers. This is so strange. Okay, so here um, I'm just showing you the dies that I used. So three out of four of those are from the Frightful Tags dies, and that fourth one is the layering circle die. But remember, you do get a circle in Frightful Tags if you're new to crafting or if that's your first circle, just, just play around with it. It will still fit within and behind that panel. And this is our witch silhouette. Um, this is actually more of a silhouette stamp set. You get a lot of solid stamped images here, um, which is why I love the Memento Tuxedo Black ink with it. Really, really bold imagery. And it's so perfect for Halloween. Completely different feel from cute Halloween but they actually coordinate perfectly. So it's really interesting um, how they did that. And I, I think that is really um, a nod to the artists, the artists from Stampin' Up. I think that they just did um, an incredible job with Halloween this year. Uh, if I could request anything for 2022, it would be a haunted house stamp and die, please and thank you. Okay, so now that we have that piece adhered, what I'm doing is I'm going to all my little die cut pieces. I like to put them in a baggie when they're really small like those stars. I'm just showing um, that I did use the adhesive sheets on the back and we're gonna peel that off. Um, so these were already turned into stickers and the way you do that is by putting the adhesive sheet on the back of your cardstock and then taking your die, 
running it through the cardstock on the machine like you normally would, the adhesive being on the opposite side, of course, and then you turn your dies into stickers, uh, your die cuts into stickers, and you can peel them right off. I went with basic black and old olive for the hats as well. Um, I did not like the look of um, the hat on the upper panel. I didn't want it to compete with our flying witch in the moon. So I ended up putting it in the, the lower panel in that little um, one and a half inch spot. And then I finished it off with three black hats because I have that large um, old olive sentiment panel. I just thought it was more balanced that way. Um, and it, we have a lot of green in our background too, right? Uh, which is also old olive, by the way. Okay, so now I'm just adhering little stars for embellishment. Um, stars go along with that whole magic theme and potions and all of that with witches, right? So it's just a touch. And we know that our witches would be accessorized. We just know it. So here, I had never actually used this stamp before, and I was dying to know what it looked like. I love how it turned out. So this is actually going to be our panel for the greeting on the back of the card. And I just wanted to um, have a little something there, just tie it in, right? Just decorate it up the best that we could. So what I'm doing here is I'm testing the ink. Um, because these are solid images, you want to be very generous in inking these up. So either make sure that your, um, you know, your ink pad is well inked or use um, a stamping tool like the Stamparatus so that if you don't get a perfect image the first time, you could just re-ink and stamp it again and again. Isn't that fabulous? So I did this again all the way across, just basically creating like a bottom border. And we're going to color it with the Stampin' Blends. I'm using the Old Olive Combo. I'm also going to use Smoky Slate Light to create a shadow and a little bit of color lifter. So the concept here, if you look at what the artists did, all of the bottles are varied. They're a little bit unique. They have different shading and different areas, different size labels. So, oh, in here, I'm just fixing a little blur. I had a little bit of a blurred spot on one of the bottles, um, a little smear. So I just fixed it with the basic black um, marker, the, ba the stamp and blend marker. I do that a lot. So here, if you guys watch me, you know that. Um, so here um, we're going to start working with these Stampin' Blends, if you're not familiar, are alcohol markers. They come in a combo pack, meaning you get a light and a dark of the same color. Um, and this allows you to create at least some basic shading. And that's what I'm doing here. So the concept was I was going to vary the colors on the different labels in the bottles. I wanted to keep the theme the same. I wanted to tie it into the front of the card. You still had the same feel on the back, um, but some of the labels are lighter, some are darker, some are more blended. Um, so I just did different variations of color on each one, and I love how it turned out. You can also use pumpkin pie, blackberry bliss, rich razzleberry, um, Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody, um, you know, Misty Moonlight. You have all these different options of what you can create for Halloween. Absolutely fantastic artwork on that, I thought, um, from the artists at Stampin' Up, whoever designed that set. And I wanted to create a little bit of a shadow underneath the bottles. So I put the Smoky Slate Light just at the bottom there. And then I took a tiny bit of color lifter because I think it makes the shadow look a little more authentic. And then I just placed it onto the back of the card. So here it's just basic white cardstock. Um, you know, the stamp and blends, they dry immediately. You don't have to worry about smearing them when you're setting them on the back. And now you have a place where you can write um, to whoever your card recipient's gonna be. I just think it's important to have that. You could always um, have like a loose panel too, you know, cut it um, four by five and a quarter inches and just tuck it inside, but you don't wanna mess too much with the mechanism. So I preferred the panel on the back. Okay, so just coming back to the original card here, you can see it's a different theme, the gray granite, the Highland Heather, a um, little bit of the basic black there. Um, I really wanted to have that bat theme. I thought it went perfectly with all of the art and imagery. So that's where I pulled in Sparkle of the Season. But um, the cute Halloween suite, can't recommend it enough. Um, you can do either designer series paper, like I fussy cut those two ghosts, but you could also stamp and punch out um, a ghost with the art that they have from that set. So 
I highly encourage you to check it out. I actually have a link in the description if you're interested in shopping with me. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Uh, so this is the bat die that I'm just referring to here that is part of the seasonal swirls die, or you can find it in the sparkle of the season bundle. This is in our um, 2021 mini catalog from July to December uh, from Stampin' Up! And we lovingly refer to it as our holiday catalog. Now here I am mentioning the technique to create a tombstone border with the lovely labels Pick-A-Punch. Um, I actually did this technique last year and what you would need is like a two inch strip of cardstock. You can cut it to whatever length you want. I usually just do like a full piece like eight inches across or 11 inches across just whatever I have and I just stamp a whole border. You can always trim the border down to size whatever you need for your card but um, if you want to do, if you're a scrapbooker, you could do a full 12 inch all the way across because you're feeding it sideways through the punch. You just line it up with that quarter and then you punch. So that inner corner there, and you'll see the notch. I'm going to point to it here in a second. So that little notch right there, you're going to line up with that inner metal corner piece and then punch again. You do that all the way across. And I have a full tutorial um, on creating a tombstone border on my a YouTube channel. So if you're here and you're more interested in that, you can see more details about it. Um, you're going to do this with basic black cardstock and you're going to do it with gray granite cardstock. The only difference is you're going to trim out the tombstones with the gray granite and then adhere that to this sort of um, shadow border. And that will create a really cool effect for you. The other thing is, you could really do up your tombstones too. You know, you could ink them, make them look dirty, um, make them look a little bit more scary. You could stamp sentiments onto them. That trick or treat sentiment is from Cutest Halloween Stamp Set. Fit perfectly. Um, I wanted this to little, be a little bit more clean and bright and cute, so I didn't really mess with the tombstones at all. Um, but I'm just showing you that that lines up. So that would be a five and a half inch strip that you would use there. And then you would need a one and a half inch panel if you were going to do it on those smaller pieces and have it go all the way across. Get my trusty ruler. Can't do anything without my ruler. Okay, so there you go. All right, so you have two completely different themes um, for Halloween with this wiper card. Uh, but if you notice, there's actually not very much orange, I think just on the beaks of the bird. Um, but I just thought that with the, um, the skeletons, you know, they all seem like they're being a little bit silly and whimsical, you know, one's rolling his eyes, one's laughing, the ghosts look like they're up to something, the crow is like checking something out. So it's just kind of like a fun little Halloween theme. I didn't think it was too scary. Um, this is the little bat stamp that I wanted to show you from Sparkle of the Season. I... I was trying to keep it all from, you know, cutest Halloween or frightfully cute, but I couldn't resist because I love those bats. Okay, and that's an option. You could always do the candy as a border. You could do some of the cute faces as a border. Um, the little a spider you could do as a border. You know, you have other options, but I went for the bats. There's a bat there too. So if you need, you know, a different bat stamp or you want to use one, you have another one um, that you could certainly use. Also very cute, just different art on Frightfully Cute. I love the combination of the gray granite, the Highland Heather, and the basic black. Really love that. And the ghosts and the skeletons actually have tiny little touches of pink um, about them with the artwork that they have there. Um, so there's just like little pops of pastel. All right, so we are gonna be wrapping this up here in just a moment. I just wanna thank you so much. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. Let me know what you think of the card in the comments. Is this a card that you would make? Um, let me know. Thank you so much and have a great day.